video shows how to overhaul the cylinder head, piston and cylinder liner. With regard to the dismounting and mounting of the components, please refer to the relevant instruction book or to the cylinder head, piston and cylinder liner exchange video. This film shows how to use the tools which are available for the LNV 2832H type of engine. Remove the scavenge air sleeve and the safety valve. For instructions regarding the overhauling of the safety valve, please see work card 605-01.25. The procedure for overhauling the indicator valve can be seen on work card 605-01.26. Land the cylinder head on the work table. Make sure that the valve spindle supports have been mounted on the underside of the table. Remove the cylinder head lifting tool. Screw the cylinder head firmly to the work table. Remove and discard the gasket. Remove the valve bridges and mount the tool for compressing the valve springs above either the two inlet valves or the two exhaust valves. Tighten the nut to compress the springs and then remove the cone rings. Loosen the nut and remove the compressing tool. Remove the valve rotators and the springs. For instructions regarding the inspection and overhaul of the valve rotators, see work card 605-01.15. Remove the cone rings, valve rotators and springs from the other set of valve spindles in the same way. Regarding the overhauling of the fuel valve, see work card 614-01.10. Turn the cylinder head upside down and remove the valve spindle supports. To ensure that they can be rematched correctly, provide the spindles and cylinder head with numbers. Remove the valve spindles.
clean and check the condition of the valve seats and valve spindles. If the seats and spindles are badly burnt, recondition them. See work card 605 stroke 01.10. Clean the valve guides with the special tool delivered with the grinding machine. Mount the grinding machine and grind the valve seats following the instructions of the grinding machine supplier. Grind the valve spindles in a turning lathe following the instructions of the grinding machine supplier. Remove and discard the O-rings from the valve guides. To ensure the correct functioning of the valve guides, make sure that the diameters do not exceed the maximum limit. Insert a valve spindle to facilitate the mounting of new O-rings. Insert new O-rings using another spindle to press the O-rings completely into the groove. Check the cooling water inlet bores and remove any deposits. Turn the cylinder head around and check the cooling water outlet. Pour water into the cooling water outlet and ensure that water flows from all the inlet bores in the bottom of the cylinder head. If necessary, clean and flush the bores. Mount the inlet and exhaust valve spindles in the reverse order to the dismounting. Make sure that height H2 does not exceed the maximum limit. Remove the valve spindle supports. Apply grinding paste to the sealing surface of the cylinder head. Move the grinding tool back and forth, lifting it from time to time, so that the grinding compound is evenly distributed. After grinding, carefully clean the cylinder head. Measure and record distance Z so that it can be used for reference purposes when remounting the cylinder head. Mount the valve bridges and remove the securing screws. Mount the cylinder head lifting tool and lift the cylinder head.
Remove and discard the O-rings. Clean the O-ring grooves using emery cloth to remove any deposits. Make sure that the cylinder head sealing surfaces are clean and undamaged. Lubricate new O-rings with oil and mount them in the grooves. Lubricate the safety valve with molly coat or a similar product and screw it into the cylinder head. Remove and discard the piston rings and the scraper ring. Clean any deposits off the piston. It is recommended that a piece of old piston ring be used to clean the piston ring grooves. Clean off any deposits from the inside of the piston. Check the piston ring grooves and scraper ring groove for wear. The piston must be scrapped if the wear limit line on the testing mandrel is exceeded. Clean all machine surfaces of the connecting rod and bearing cap. Clean the serrated joint faces and threaded holes with a volatile solvent and then blow dry with compressed air. Check the serrated joint faces for wear marks, pitting, cracks, etc. Refer to work card 606 stroke 01 0.15 for possible rectification and reuse criteria. Enter observations in the connecting rod inspection report. Clean the threads of the screws or the studs and check them for seizures. Lubricate the threads with molly coat or a similar product and check that the screws or the studs can be screwed fully home by hand. Take great care that the lubricant does not come into contact with the joint faces of the bearing. Also check for seizures or pitting on the contact surface of the screw heads. Assemble the bearing without bearing shells. Make sure that the identification numbers on the connecting rod and those on the bearing cap are the same. Hand tighten the bearing assembly. The big end bearing must be tightened according to the prescribed tightening procedure before measuring the diameters. Adjust the torque spanner to 400 newton meters. Using an initial torque of 400 newton meters, tighten the screws in the tightening sequence shown.
Retighten the screws in the same tightening sequence, still using a torque of 400 newton meters. Make marks on the four screws and the connecting rod with a felt-tipped pen. Tighten the screws in the same tightening sequence through a 60 degree angle until the marks on the screws and those on the connecting rod coincide in the radial direction. Adjust the torque spanner to 700 newton meters. Check the tightness of the screws. If the screws cannot be tightened further at this torque of 700 newton meters, they have attained the correct tightness. The big end bearing must be tightened according to the prescribed tightening procedure before measuring the diameters. Clean all joint faces and mount the hydraulic tools. Make sure that all the parts engage correctly. Connect the hydraulic tools to the high pressure pump. Vent the system if necessary and increase the oil pressure to the prescribed value. Tighten the nuts with a tummy bar. Relieve the system of pressure and remove the hydraulic tools. Mark the five positions, A to E, at which the diameters of the bearing bore are to be measured. Measure the diameters in the middle of the bore and note down the result in the connecting rod inspection report. The maximum ovalness is defined as being the difference between the largest and smallest diameter measurement. Please refer to page 600.35 for maximum allowable ovalness values. Clean and inspect the surfaces of the piston pin and the connecting rod bushing. Insert the piston pin and measure the clearance between piston pin and connecting rod bushing. The maximum allowable clearance values are given in page 600.35. Loosen the big end bearing assembly and then hand tighten it.
inspect the big end bearing shells through the magnifying tool. For help in evaluating bearing conditions, please refer to work card 606 stroke 01.16. Mark the positions in the longitudinal as well as in the transverse directions at which the diameters of the cylinder liner are to be measured. Make sure that the measuring tool has approximately the same temperature as the cylinder liner. Measure the diameters in the longitudinal as well as in the transverse directions and enter the results in the measurement of cylinder liner report. Please refer to page 600.35 for information regarding permissible cylinder line wear values. If the liner is designed to hold a flame ring, clean and reinstall the used flame ring before honing the liner. Mount the tool for holding down the cylinder liner and remove any deposits or wear ridges from the upper part of the liner. Fit the drain funnel to the low end of the liner to prevent contamination of the crankcase during honing. Lubricate the honing tool and the liner with honing oil or cutting oil. Adjust the speed of rotation to 80 to 160 RPM. Use a vertical speed of about one meter per second to achieve the required angle between the honing grooves. During honing, lubricate freely with honing oil or cutting oil. Continue the honing until the cylinder wall is covered by honing grooves and has a slightly matte appearance without sign of glaze. Clean the cylinder liner carefully and remove the tool for holding down the cylinder liner. If the liner is designed to hold a flame ring, clean and install a new flame ring. Remove and discard the old sealing ring at the top of the cylinder liner. Apply grinding paste to the grinding tool. Move the grinding tool back and forth, lifting it from time to time to allow the even distribution of the grinding compound. After grinding, clean the cylinder liner carefully and mount a new sealing ring. Remove the drain funnel. Measure and record distance Y. Please refer to measurement Z, which was recorded during the overhaul of the cylinder head. To ensure that the sealing between the cylinder head and the liner is correct, Y minus Z must be more than 0.5 millimeter. 